Good afternoon. Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is another Windows Server 2008 R2 video tutorial. In my live show on Wednesday nights, I do a live show now called Tech Talk. We had somebody call in and asked how you would create another group of IP addresses in your DHCP server. So that is what I'm going to go ahead and take the time right now to show you how to do. Let's go ahead and get started. First, simply click on the start button, go to administrative tools and DHCP. Once we're in DHCP, I'm going to open this up a little bit here so we can see what's going on. We can cluff or just click on the X here and we're working with IP4. IP6 is the new IP scheme and I'm sure you know about that that not many companies have adapted just yet. Some of the bigger companies are now kind of testing it such as Google, Microsoft, uh, some of the larger people with Verizon, AT&T that have a lot of IP address requirements. But for most companies right now we're currently using IPv4, as we probably will into the uh, possibly uh, future, good good bit of the future, we're still using that. If you click the little pull down menu here on this scope, this is everything underneath of a scope. This is an address pool. So our current address schemes are 192.168.1.100 to 192.168.1.200. Now, if you click on this, the only thing you see an option for is a new exclusion range. And if you click on the scope itself, you can see here we can split a scope, but that's still not what we want to do. What we want to do is actually click on IPv4 and right click on it and go to new scope. Now, there's a new super scope, which a super scope actually entails a bunch of little scopes, which you could use if you'd like to do that. Or you could do a new multicast scope, which if you're into multicasting, such as what Ghost or uh, I think it's Semantic Ghost does, then you'd want to use multicast, um, and it works in the same way. It, it sends out multicasts to your scope. What we're going to do is just a basic new scope. And welcome to the new scope wizard. Click Next. Give it a name. Since the first one we called is Scope 1, We'll stick with that and call this scope two. You don't really need a description, so we'll just click next. Now we'll have to start the IP range somewhere. So since we ended the last or started the last scope at 100, you could actually do this if you wish. 192.168. We could do 2.100. And then we can do 192.168.2, and we can end it at 253. So that gives us a length of 24. It gives us a subnet mask, it already gives that to you, of 255.255.255.0, which it makes it part of a Class C network. And you can extend this down. I usually use 100 because I leave everything before 100 for my servers or switches or whatever I may need on my network. But if you want to, you could start this at, say, 2. And you would have it. You would have all these addresses that are available to you. Click Next. Now, this is if you have any uh, exclusions that you want to not use in that range. So right now, we're not going to have any. Click Next. And this is the duration of the lease. And we've talked about this before in other videos. But you can have it set to 8 days. Or, I told you in the other videos, like for laptops, I like to set it for 8 hours because they're in and out of your network so often. And you can configure other options for your scope now. We can do that. It's going to ask us for our router or default gateway. Well, that would be 192.168.1.1. That's what we're going to add. That's the default gateway. 
the domain name here is home.net. That's what I used. And you can set up DNS server addresses if you wish. So um, we're not going to do that now. Click next. If you use Win servers, you can also set those up. We're going to just click next. And it says, yes, I want to activate this scope or no, I'll activate this scope later. I'm going to select that because I have a DHCP server on my network. Click next and finish. Now you'll see we have a scope one and we have a scope two. And here's our new address pool that our clients will now actually have access to once we activate that secondary scope. So I hope this video tutorial helped you along to create another bank of IP addresses in your DHCP server. It's very easy and we do this quite often because as your network gets larger and larger, sometimes when we build our initial domain controller or our DHCP server, we don't take into account how big the network may get. And the network I work at right now running over 700 computers and getting new iPads all the time uh, and bringing e-readers into the uh, network as well as laptops, we are always adding some more IP addresses. And I'm sure you will too. So if you enjoyed this video and you would like to learn even more about Windows Server 2008, please stop by my online class and have a look at that. The class is http colon slash slash online class dot jackstechcorner.com or simply go to jackstechcorner.com and you can simply click on the link for there for the online class so explain it to you and there's a link there to take you to the online site or I also sell a Windows Server 2008 R2 training DVD that is listed on my site also you'll find it right on the front page uh, there's a little pull down menu for all kind of training DVDs you'll find it there so again, thank you very much, and I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial with me, learning here with Windows Server 2008, and I'll see you back here next time with another Windows Server tip. So long for now.